Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening, good evening teacher. teacher. All right, good to yes, see I you. Can hear you. Okay, I great, hear you. great. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you and good to hear you. All right, so uh, let's begin. Begin to start the class. So first of all, let me go full screen. Not full screen, let me share the screen with you. Okay. <clears throat> so second thing here, uh, we're going through the attendance list. So when you hear your name, please let me know. There are 20 people right now. Okay. Alejandro, no, sorry, Abdi Avisua Peña López. Abdi Avisua Peña López. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, welcome. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher, present. Good evening, welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Present. Welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Present teacher, I'm here. Welcome. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Good evening, teacher. Welcome. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present, sir. Welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present, teacher. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Present. Welcome. Gladys Imelda Sanchez. Present. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jose Eraidín Enríquez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Luis Fernando Enríquez Herrera. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. <coughs> Madeline, Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Okay, thank you, Madeline. Welcome, Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Good evening, present, teacher. Okay. All right, uh, Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Melanie? Present. Ah, okay, welcome. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. Okay, it seems Noemi is having some problems with the microphone. Okay, uh, but yeah, welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Present. Hello. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Rufino Amílcar Hernández Linares. Present, teacher. Welcome. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Welcome. Okay. Everybody, welcome once again. This is English on Salo Modo 3, Advanced English number three. And uh, that's me, Ivan, at your service. This is session number 12, the last session of the third week. And today is November the 16th of 2023. We have a chat entry right now. Jenny Elizabeth says present. Okay, thank you, Jenny Elizabeth. Okay, attendance taken. All right. Me uh, too, teacher. Good evening, Jenny Mendoza. Okay, Please, Jenny. Okay. All right, thank you. Taken. Okay.
let's begin. So what are we going to do? First, we're going to have a short review on what we studied yesterday. <clears throat> it's wishes and regrets. Okay, so we, we covered this yesterday and it took us quite a while. So we're not going to go over the whole thing again. It's just going to be a very quick review. So uh, bear with me for a second as we go through it for a second time. So for wishes about the present and future, you have to use wish plus the past simple. You can also use the past continuous. You can also use the modal auxiliaries could or would and the verb. For example, I wish I had enough nerve to ask for a promotion. Now, this is a wish about the present. This person wants to be brave enough to ask for a promotion, but this person in reality, this person is not brave enough to ask for a promotion. That's why he or she is saying, I wish I had enough nerve to ask for, for a promotion. The moment this person says, I wish I had, that means that this person doesn't have it, okay? The second one, I wish I could find the time to do volunteer work. In other words, this person doesn't have the time to do volunteer work, can't find the time. So it's a hypothetical situation, right? Just like the second conditional, you use the past form to express a hypothetical situation. Now for regrets about the past, you have to use wish plus the past perfect. And what is the past perfect? The past perfect is the auxiliary had, in past and the main verb in past participle. So you can say, I wish I had taken a few Spanish classes. That means this person had the opportunity to take Spanish classes, but didn't do it, okay? And now this person regrets it. This person wants to turn back time and correct his or her mistake. So I wish I had given my parents, I hadn't, sorry. I wish I hadn't given my parents such a hard time when I was growing up. Okay, so this person was probably, you know, quite a rebel, okay, and uh, gave his or her parents a very hard time uh, as a teenager. Okay, so this person says again, I wish I hadn't given my parents such a hard time when I was growing up. So again, if you are expressing a wish for the present or the future, you use wish plus the past simple, the past continuous, could or would, and the verb. But if it is a regret about the past, okay, something that you did that was not the best thing to do, or a good thing that you didn't do, okay, you're talking about regrets about the past, um, you use wish plus the past perfect affirmative or negative form. Now for regrets about the past, you can also use the third conditional, okay? What is the third conditional? You use if plus the past perfect. And for the main clause, you can use could or would have plus a past participle. If I had stuck with something, I could have gotten good at it, okay? That's how you express a regret using the third conditional. Okay, and uh, the last one, and this is where we stopped for strong wishes. Now, this is for strong wishes or strong regrets, okay? Strong wishes about the present or future or for strong regrets about the past, you use if only. If only, you use it instead of I wish, okay? If only clauses are often used without a main clause, okay? You can say, if only my boss would consider promoting me. All right. By the way, uh, something that I also mentioned yesterday is that would, you use would plus the verb uh, in wish clauses, normally when you expect a behavior or a different attitude from another person. Okay. Normally not from yourself. It's from another person. Okay. Like in this one, if only my boss would consider promoting me, that means that uh, I try and I try and I try and my boss never promotes this, me, me, okay, if I were this person. Never promotes me, never promotes me, okay? I try and I try to convince him, and but now he doesn't think I deserve a promotion. So, all right. So I, I would like my boss to have like a change in behavior, all right? That's why I am saying right here, if only my boss would consider promoting me, okay? That's the only case in which you use would in the if clause, only in that case. Now, uh, we went through this yesterday and we have had a short review right now. So we're going to do the exercises. This is knowledge check 3.8. You can find it in the platform. Let me show you. Uh, well, it's loading. So rewrite these statements using the words in parentheses. Compare your answers with a partner. Are there any sentences true for you? 
Let's see. Now let's check. It's this one right here. Okay, so if you haven't completed it, okay, this is a good opportunity to do it. We're going to do the exercise together. So number one is, I sorry, I can't find the time to exercise. That's the first one. I can't find the time to exercise. So you have, I wish, in parenthesis. So you say, if you notice, this is something, this is a, a statement in present. That means that you have to use wish plus the past simple or could. So I can't find the time to exercise. I wish I could find the time to exercise. What about number two? My grades weren't very good last semester. And then you have if only. Now you have weren't. Weren't is the past. In other words, this person has a regret about the past. You have to use past perfect. All right. So what about number two? Who would like to participate and tell us uh, a sentence expressing a regret about the past? My grades weren't very good last semester. What can you say? Anyone? Jenny Elizabeth, thank you. Okay, teacher. It, the, is, if only my grades have been better last semester. If only my grades have, sorry, have wrong, been, wrong way, window. If only my grades right. have been better have last been semester better. that semester. is correct okay thank you jenny that is correct if only my grades have been better last semester okay <laughs> we're using the verb be so you use the verb be in past perfect very good great number three i don't know how to play the piano very well now this is when the person says i don't know that's the present so you have to express a wish about the present. You know that you have to use past simple, okay? So I don't know how to play the piano very well. Let's use I wish. Byron. <laughs> okay. I wish I knew how to play the piano very well. I wish I knew how to play the piano very well. Okay, very good. Very good, thank you. I wish I knew how to play the piano very well. Excellent. What about number four? I didn't apply for that interesting job at work. Now you have to use I wish. Gladys Imelda Sanchez. Yeah, it could be I wish I had applied for that interesting job at work. That's correct. I wish I had applied for that interesting job at work. Correct. Excellent. Number five. I am feeling very stressed these days. I wish. Now look, I am feeling, this is present continuous, all right? I am feeling very stressed these days. Who wants to participate? Nobody? <laughs> Come on. Okay, Jenny and Gladys. Okay, so we go with Jenny and then Gladys. And what yeah. about the rest, people? I mean, try to participate. Show me you have worked on this. Show me that you understand the structure. Okay, Jenny. Okay, I wish I weren't feeling so stressed these days. I wish I weren't feeling so stressed these days. Stressed. That is correct. Uh -huh. I wish I weren't feeling. You can also say, I wish I wasn't feeling, but that will be informal, okay? okay? Know that the grammatically correct form of using the verb be in this type of sentences is where only, okay? But only in this type of sentences. If you're talking about the past, then you, yeah, you have to use was or where, depending on the subject. So uh, only for hypothetical conditions do you use where. Um, excellent. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Gladys, what about number six? six? I never learned how to swim when I was a child. Let's use if only. If only I had learned how to swim when I was a child. That is correct. Thank you. If only I had learned how to swim when I was a child. Very good. Okay. It's a regret about the past. Therefore, you use past perfect. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number seven. I gave away all my old CDs and DVDs last summer. 
if only. Who wants to try? Vamos, que no sean siempre las mismas cinco personas que participan. Maritza, and then Boris. Uh, number seven. Number seven, yes. If, if only I hadn't given away all my old CDs and DVDs last summer. Correct. If only I hadn't given away all my old CDs and DVDs last summer. Okay, this person regrets doing that. And uh, what about number eight? Well, Rosa is raising her hand right now, but Boris did it first. So uh, I don't know, Boris, do you want to take this one or would you give it to Rosa? Hi, teacher. Sorry? I'm going to try, okay? Okay, okay. All right, so Rosa, you go for the next exercise, I promise. But Boris, he, he raised his hand first. Okay, uh, if, Boris? If only I hadn't watched too much TV, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, and? <laughs> and read enough when I was a kid. Okay, so if only I hadn't watched so much TV and then you have and didn't read, so you have to use past perfect again. And? And? Uh, had, had read enough had when I was a kid. Had read, okay, so read, yeah. if only I hadn't watched so much TV and had read more when I was a kid. Yeah, those are okay. the answers, okay? Those are the answers uh, to knowledge check 3.8. So everybody, it's uh, this exercise right here, okay? Does anyone have any problems with this exercise, by the way? No one? Okay. In my case, no, teacher. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so, well, let's continue then. Okay, there, there are more exercises here. Because of the time, because it's 8.18, we're going to skip this one. This is extra, actually, so we're going to skip it. We're going to go directly over the grammar extra, which I believe is going to be much more effective right now. So, wishes and regrets. Okay, now wishes and regrets often use comparative words such as enough or not enough, more, less, and better, and intensifiers such as really and very. For example, I didn't save enough money last semester, so I wish I had saved more money last summer. I said semester, sorry, she said summer, I need glasses. So I didn't save enough money last summer. I wish I had saved more money last summer. Now, what happens if you use the word enough? I mean, you can use it. You can say, I wish I had saved enough money last summer. Sounds, I mean, it's grammatically correct, but it sounds better if you say, I wish I had saved more money last summer, okay? Second example, I spent too much money on video games last year. If only I had spent less money on video games last year. Because when you are stating one of these sentences, remember that it's a hypothetical situation. Therefore, it's the opposite of reality. So if you say too much and you say the opposite, you have to say less, right? It is only logical. Affirmative becomes negative. Negative becomes affirmative, okay? And so on. So I spent too much money on video games last year, too much becomes the opposite, less. If only I had spent less money on video games last year. Also, you say, I bought too many clothes on the weekend. I wish I had bought fewer clothes on the weekend. So fewer becomes the opposite of too many. I don't understand math very well. I wish I understood math better, okay? Sounds better than saying, I wish I understood math very well. I mean, people will understand, but definitely if you say better, okay, that um, gives you the idea that you understand math, but not to the level you wish you understood math. And the last one, I got really angry at my friend last night. If, I, if only I hadn't gotten so angry at my friend last night. 
Okay, so angry. Now you have done something similar in the previous exercise. So this shouldn't really be that hard. We're going to do an exercise right here. This is extra, by the way, I'm going to share this with you. Let's see, where's the WhatsApp group? Advanced three. Okay, there's the information. All right, so uh, exercise. Complete the wishes and regrets with, wor with a word from the box. It can barely be seen. Let's see if I can do something about it. I'm going to copy a box from a different slide. Um, this one here. Okay. So, meditating the presentation as I'm presenting. So, uh, let's do it. Complete the wishes and regrets with a word from the box. And the box contains the words better, fewer, harder, less, more and so you can only use each word once okay so you cannot repeat them number one i don't have enough time to do volunteer work who wants to try jose raibin yeah, i don't have enough time to do volunteer work i wish i had more time to do volunteer work i wish i had more time to do volunteer work. That is correct. Thank you, Jose. Very good. Number two, I don't know how to swim very well. Byron. <laughs> I don't know how to swim very well. I wish I knew how to swim better. That is correct. Very good. I wish I knew how to swim better. Excellent. Number three, Miss Romero. Miss Romero, you look like you're falling asleep. <laughs> okay. I drank too much coffee before bed last night. Yeah, I drank too much coffee before bed last night. If only I had drunk less coffee before bed last night. Correct. If only I had drunk less coffee before bed last night. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Gabriela Sequeira and then Gladys Imelda. Gabriela, number four is yours. Gladys, number five. Number four, Tom didn't study very hard for his exam. <clears throat> Tom didn't study very hard for this exam. Tom wishes he had studied harder for his exam. Yeah, Tom wishes he had studied harder for his exam. Very good. Thank you, Gabriela. Great. Uh, Gladys, you still there? <laughs> Number five, our class has too many assignments this week. I wish our class had uh, fewer assignments this week. Yeah, I wish our class had fewer assignments this week. Very good. While we're on the topic, okay, um, do you know the difference between less and fewer? And this is an open question for the whole class, okay? Do you know the difference between uh, less and fewer? This is, is, a, is, a, is <laughs> fewer is, is like a, a regular, like this Not exactly. sure. i guess that I'm one of them is is for countable and the other is for non-countable nouns mm -hmm. it's more like that okay you use less for uncountable nouns or non-countable nouns and you use fewer with countable nouns like in this case coffee is an uncountable noun that's why we use less assignments is a, count a plural countable noun that's why you use fewer that's the difference very much. Although <laughs> in spoken, in formal English, people use the word less often, even with, uh, you know, uh, plural countable nouns. People do it like that. They say less people, for example, which is grammatically incorrect. You should have to say fewer people, okay? Fewer students, fewer books, fewer assignments, okay? But informally, people use less also. Okay. So, um, what about number six? Volunteer. I only really, I, I feel, sorry, I felt really sleepy in class and couldn't pay any attention. So there's only one, one option left. Should be easy. <laughs> Rosa Esmeralda. I feel really sleeping in class in code. Couldn't. Pay any attention. Pay any attention. 
any attention. I wish uh, I hadn't felt so sleeping in class and had paid attention. Yeah, I wish I hadn't felt so sleepy in class and had paid attention. Very good. Thank you, Rosa. Great. That's the exercise right there. Very good, people. All right. Um, what about the time? Yeah, we have time. Let's do this, okay? If we're going to do it, let's do it right. Rewrite these sentences using the words in parentheses. So, I wasn't very obedient in elementary school. So, you have, I wish. Let's do the first one as an example. I wish I had been more obedient in elementary school. I'm going to give you six minutes, okay, for you to rewrite the other five sentences right here. Six minutes starting right now. Let's begin. Whoops, give me a second. Okay. Six minutes, let's begin.
One minute. All right, time is up. Time to check. What about number two? I refused to take piano lessons when I was young. What about if only Byron? <clears throat> okay, if only hadn't refused to take piano lessons when I was young. Okay, but you forgot one thing, the subject. If only... If only I hadn't refused uh -huh. to take piano lessons when I was young. <laughs> if only I had... Well, you can say that if only I hadn't refused to take piano lessons when I was young. You can say that totally. Absolutely. Alternatively, you can also say if only I had taken piano lessons when I was young. Okay. Then, then that would also work. Okay. So, yeah, your answer is good. Your answer is good. So, but what I have is a little bit different, but both answers are okay. All right. Uh, Alejandro, number three. I fell asleep at the computer last night, and now my essay is late. I wish I hadn't fell asleep. At I wish, the, I one, wish one thing. I wish I hadn't felt asleep. Mm -mm, that's not the no. past participle of fall. I don't know what is the <laughs> what is for. The past participle of fall is fallen. Mm -hmm. Fallen asleep. So I wish I hadn't fallen asleep at the computer last night. Then my essay is late. My essay is okay. late. But that's what happens actually. Okay, so then my essay is late. But now that we're talking about the opposite of reality, we have to use would then, or wouldn't. <laughs> okay all right but good all right but, but thank you for participating i wish i hadn't fallen asleep at the computer last night then my essay who can help us with the second part about the second part right here teacher maybe my essay were weren't late okay. wasn't late sir but we're not talking about a condition we're talking about a result So we don't have to use past simple in this case. But thank you for participating. Um, Who can tell us? Yes, Miss. Then Romano. my essay wouldn't be late. That's more like it. Yeah, I wish I hadn't fallen asleep at the computer last night. Then my essay wouldn't be late. Now this is something that we called mixed conditionals. Okay. But that's a topic we're going to study or we're going to cover in full, you know, next week. But yeah, correct. Thank you very much. Thank you for your participation, Alejandro, uh, Jose, and Ms. Romero. Number four, I exercised too much yesterday, so now I feel really tired. Now, it's a very similar item. What do we have here? I exercised too much yesterday, so now I feel really tired. If only, and then. Who wants to try? Cecilia, and then Maritza. Okay, and uh, if only yesterday I had exercised too much, then I wouldn't feel so tired. Okay, I wouldn't feel so tired now. Okay, good. Just there is one word that I would change because you told me if only I hadn't exercised too much yesterday, I will change the word to for a different word. What word can we use here? So, 
so that is correct so if only i haven't exercised so much yesterday then i wouldn't feel tired now because when you say too much that is like demasiado so then when you say it in a different way so much means tanto si tan solo no me hubiera no hubiera ejercitado tanto que okay, ayer no me sentiría todo cansado ahora so if only i had an exercise so much yesterday then i wouldn't feel so tired now thanks for participating uh very good very good answers number five bob is shy and doesn't make friends very easily i believe uh who wanted to participate somebody wanted to participate but i forgot who it was i believe it was uh maritza i believe no no <laughs> am i wrong no okay jose what about number five Bob is shy and doesn't make friends very easily. Bob wishes good. Uh, were were in shy. Okay, uh, but uh, you forgot make, the subject. You forgot the subject. Uh, Bob wishes. Bob wishes he were. Mm -hmm. He were in shy. Uh huh. And make more and make friends easier. Okay, uh, easier. You can say easier or easily. It's okay. Also. Let's see, uh, Bob wishes he weren't, or wasn't, if you want to say it in an informal way, shy and made or could make, all right, friends easily or easier, as you said, okay, will also apply. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, number six, I am not a very good cook, if only. Alejandro, your hand is up. I don't know if you want to try or... No, okay. You forgot to put it down. Okay. Uh, somebody was raising the hand. Jose, okay, Jose. If only I were, I weren't a better cook. If to... only I were or weren't? I. If only I were a better uh -huh. cook. If only I were a better cook or if only I was a better cook. You can say I was, but again, it's informal. That is correct. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay, 8.42. We don't have much time, so let's move on. Uh, <clears throat> personal values. Okay, we're going to do this vocabulary exercise. It's not included in the platform, but I believe it's important because vocabulary is extremely important. So personal values. What words describe people's values? complete the chart with the correct noun or adjective. So on the uh, left, okay, we have nouns. On the right, we have adjectives. And then you have, for example, the noun compassion. Okay, the, the adjective that derivates from the noun com uh, compassion is compassionate. Okay, compassionate, that's the adjective. Okay, a compassionate person is a person who shows compassion. Okay. What about the second one? You have the adjective discreet. What is the noun? Does anybody know? A discreet person, right? Okay, so Jose. Maybe discretion. Discretion. That's right. Okay, that's the noun. Very good. Thank you. The next noun is generosity. Okay, so what's the what's the adjective? Debbie. Generous. Generous. Okay, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, the adjective uh, word that derivates from generosity is generous. Very good. Alejandro, what about the next one? The adjective is honest. What will be the noun? Honestly. Honestly with L Y. Honesty. Honesty. Okay, just yeah. with Y. <laughs> correct. Because honestly is an adverb, okay, not a noun. So honesty is the noun, okay? If you say honestly, el y is honestamente. If you say honesty, just like that is la honestidad. Correct, okay, very good. So there's honesty, that's the noun, the adjective is honest. For the next column, the adjective is indifferent. What is the noun? Jose. Indifference. Indifference, that is correct, okay? Indifference. Uh, I want to use an uh, uh, a wish sentence. Let's see, I'm going to write it here. I wish more students would participate. 
<laughs> for those who participate constantly, thank you very much. Very good. Keep doing it. But I also wish the rest would participate. Okay. I wish. I really wish. Okay. What about the next one? You have the noun, kindness. What is the adjective? Okay. Um, I don't know if Alejandro wanted to go or if your hand is only up. No. <laughs> Your hand was up. Okay. Debbie. Okay. Tomorrow, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this kind. Kind. That is correct. Okay. The adjective is kind. Good person. A good person is a kind person. Okay. So uh, kindness, kind. Very good. The next noun is resilience. Resilience. What is the adjective? Jose. Resilient. Resilient. Okay. The, the adjective is resilient. Okay. Very good. Uh, Byron, the adjective is respectful. What's the noun? It's respect. Respect. Okay. That's right. The noun is respect. Very good. Uh, Boris, I believe, wanted to participate. The noun is selfishness. What is the adjective? Selfish. Selfish, correct. Okay, selfish. Very good. Next is um, uh, Gabriela. Okay, the noun is sensitivity. What is the adjective? Sensitive. Sensitive, correct. Okay, very good. Um, while we're on the topic, just make sure you don't confuse the adjective sensitive with the adjective sensible. Okay, because they are two different words. I'm saying this because when you translate one word into Spanish and you say, how do you say sensitive in Spanish? People say sensibly. Okay, that is correct. That is correct. But in English, there is an adjective that is sensible. Now, the adjective in English sensible has nothing to do with the adjective in Spanish sensibly. Okay, they are two different things. A sensible person is a person with common sense. Okay, a person who does the logical thing. Okay, a smart person. So that's a sensible thing. Or you can also uh, use the adjective sensible for things or ideas also. That's a sensible idea. Okay, it's a, it's a good idea. It makes sense. Alejandro. The false friends. I'm sorry? Ah, yeah, those are false friends or false cognates. They call them also. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Alejandro. And how works uh, sensible in Spanish, teacher? Mm. Or what the meaning in Spanish? In Spanish, that would be lógico, o cuerdo, sensato. Sensato. Uh -huh. Sensato will be a noun for it. Like smart. Mm -hmm. Logical, in other words, okay? <laughs> Not crazy. That's the meaning of sensible. So that's a sensible idea, okay? Yeah, it's a, it's a logical, okay, good idea. That's the meaning of it. Okay. So um, what about the next one? You have the adjective tender. What is the noun? Who can tell me? Boris Salinas. Tenderness. Tenderness. That is correct. OK, tenderness. La ternura. OK, so tenderness. All right. Teacher, what is tender? Tierno. <laughs> uh, tender. OK, so tenderness. All right, so the last one is, uh, the adjective is tolerant. What is the noun? Byron. Byron. Tolerance, that is correct. Very good. Okay, it's important to know, you know, uh, vocabulary. I always say this, okay? And, and, and this is a piece of advice, okay? Take it or leave it. But uh, a lot of people don't pay you know, attention to, to vocabulary or at least the necessary attention to vocabulary. And therefore, when they're trying to produce the language, when they're trying to speak or when they're trying to write, they realize that there are many words that they don't know. And because they don't know the words, they find it difficult to express their ideas. So, um, you know, again, it's a piece of advice, take it or leave it. But every time you have the opportunity to learn new vocabulary, take it. Okay, vocabulary is extremely important, extremely important. So there's vocabulary for us right here. 
we have 10 minutes. So we're going to go over the listening exercise, which is uh, exercise 3.9 in the platform, three important values. Listen to these on the street interviews. What values do these people think are important? Number the values in the order you hear them. So the values are honesty, privacy, and respect. Okay, so uh, there are three uh, people interviewed on the street. Okay, so if, if the, per the first one talks about honesty, then assign number one to honesty, okay, and so on. So just pay close attention to this. I'm going to play the track. Please let me know if you can hear it. Three important values. Could you hear that? Okay, great. Here we go. A. Listen to these on-the-street interviews. What values do these people think are important? Number the values in the order you hear them. We're back on the street for the Ask the People portion of our show. Today, our question is, what values do you think are the most important and why? Now, I just have to find some people who are willing to talk to me. Excuse me, sir. Yes? My name is Andy Simmons. I'm a reporter for WQZ, and we're on the air. Do you have a moment to talk with us? Uh, well, uh, I'm on my way to work. This should just take a moment. Well, okay, but make it fast. Okay. We're asking people what they think are the most important values in today's society and why. Hmm, that's a tough one. I guess I think it's important to listen to your parents kids these days. My kids never listen to anything I say. Aha. Uh -huh. So you think it's important to respect your parents? That's right. Sorry. I've got to go. Bye. Goodbye. Boy, was he in a hurry. Miss, excuse me. Miss? Hello? Hmm? Yes? Do you have a second? I'm Andy Simmons from WQZ. I'm doing a radio show. Uh-huh. Well, um, we're asking people on the street what values they think are important and why. I'm sorry, I don't really have much time. It'll just take a second. Okay, then. I don't know, I guess that honesty is important. You know what they say, honesty is the best policy. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I mean, you're just going to get in trouble if you're not honest. At least, that's been my experience. I see. Listen, I have to go. Thanks. Let's see if I can find one more person. Oops! Ouch! I'm sorry. I didn't see you standing there behind me. Are you okay? No! You stepped on my toes. What are you doing standing here anyway? Well, actually, I'm interviewing people. I'm Andy Simmons from WQZ. What's that? I'm Andy Simmons from the radio station WQZ. I'm doing on-the-street interviews. Oh. Okay. We're asking people about values. What values do you think are most important in today's society? Privacy. I'd have to say privacy. I think people need to respect each other's privacy. Like right now. You really need to leave me alone. Huh. Uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, folks, that's all the time we have today for our show. Today's question was, what values do you think are important in today's society and why? After this experience, I'd have to say one thing we all need to work on is being kinder, especially to news reporters. This sure is a tough job. This is Andy Simmons of WQZ Radio signing off until next time. All right. Okay. Um, oh, I'm showing the answer here. I didn't notice. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry about that. I, I don't know why this happens sometimes. By the way, um, just a moment. I, I really don't know why it happens. Just give me a second. Hmm. Just a second. Okay. So um, I just need one person to tell me the three answers, please. <laughs> So uh, what about honesty? Which which person said that? I mean, which uh, person interviewed on the street? Imelda. Gladys, Imelda. The second person. Second person. Okay. What about privacy? Privacy. 
the third person. The third person. And then respect, obviously, the first person. Okay. First. Okay. Yeah, good. All right. Um, that's the listening exercise. By the way, I believe in the platform, it shows a little bit differently. If I'm not mistaken. You have to listen to it and then number the values in the order you hear them. Okay. So you just have to write one, two, three. Okay. It's the same, the same thing. Okay. Which is goes like two, three, one. Um, and finally, we're just going to do this. We only have five minutes. This is a reading exercise. New York honors a hero. So apologize for the poor quality here. <laughs> I guess it's a little bit hard to read, but uh Let's go over that, okay, so we can finish. So New York honors a hero. And because of the time, okay, we're about to finish. So I'm going to read it, and then you can help me, you know, do the exercise. So very quickly here. Uh, it started as a typical day for Wesley Autry, a 50-year-old construction worker in New York City. Second, okay. It was about 12.45 p.m. and he was waiting on a subway platform to take his daughters home before he went to work. He suddenly noticed a man nearby have convulsions and collapse. Mr. Autry and two women trying to help the stranger. The man, Cameron Hollipeter, managed to get on his feet, but then stumbled at the edge of the platform and fell onto the subway track. Mr. Autry looked up and saw the lights of the subway train approaching through the tunnel. What would you do? Stand horrified and watch helplessly? Most people will jump in to help, but only if there were no train in sight. Mr. Autry acted quickly. He leapt down onto the track. He realized that he didn't have time to get Mr. Holopeter and himself back up on the platform before the train arrived. So he lay on top of the man and pressed down as hard as he could. Although the driver tried to stop the train before it reached them, he couldn't. Five cars passed over them before the train finally stopped. The cars had passed only inches from his head. The first words were to ask the onlookers to tell his daughters he was okay. His first words, I'm sorry. New York loves a hero. And there was no question that Mr. Autry's actions had been just that, heroic. He became an overnight sensation. People couldn't get enough of the story. The media named him the Subway Superman. New York City Major Michael Bloomberg gave him the bronze medallion, the city's highest honor. In the past, this honor has gone to such people as General Douglas MacArthur, Martin Luther King Jr., and Muhammad Ali. He was also asked to appear on several high-profile television talk shows. His selfless bravery was also rewarded with money and gifts. Among other things, Mr. Autry received $10,000 from Donald Trump, a $5,000 gift card from the Gap Clothing Store, a new Jeep, imagine, tickets and backstage passes to the next Beyonce concert, and a free one-year public transit pass. A Disney ambassador thanked him on a one-week all-expenses-paid trip to Disney World and tickets to see the Lion King on Broadway. How did Autry, a Native veteran, react to all this? Honorably, he said, I don't feel like I did anything spectacular. I just saw someone who needed help. I did what I felt was right. Before we go over the exercise, do you have any questions about the vocabulary? I hope you were following. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any questions about the vocabulary? You're like, huh? What, teacher? What? What were you saying? No questions. All right, then. That's. Uh... I'm sorry? Uh, the 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 word uh, ask as the the onlookers onlookers the onlookers uh -huh. are the people who were looking at what was happening. Those are the onlookers. Like he was doing his heroic acts. Okay, people were like looking. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? Okay, so those are the onlookers, people watching. 
the specific event. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, Boris? <clears throat> Your teacher might be maybe the phrase uh, stumble at the edge. Ah, that means that he was. You know that when when you're waiting for the train, you know at the subway station, of course you have to wait on the platform, and then that there's like a gap, there's a space. Okay, so he stumbled. He was right at the edge of it. He stumbled and fell down, fell inside. You know the narrow space where the train, you know, passes. Stumble means uh, that's pretty much the meaning of it. Boris. Ah, sorry, that was Boris. Okay, someone else? <laughs> no one else. All right, then. Uh, let's check answers. Read the article. Are these statements true or false? Autry had a notice Hollow Peter before he fell into the tracks. Is that true or false? You know the answer? Please raise your hand. False, I think. Debbie says uh, false. She thinks. Debbie is not sure. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. I guess. All right. <laughs> okay, it's false, you say. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. Okay, Ana Filomena, what do you think? Okay, Debbie says false. Okay, do you agree? Yes, I am. Okay, you, you agree. So uh, it is false. That's correct. It is false because he and two women had already helped him when he had convulsions and collapse before he stumbled into the tracks, into the track. Okay. So what about number two? There was very little space between Autry and the bottom of the train. Is that true or false? It is true. Okay. It is true. Yeah, that's right. It was only inches above his head. So can you imagine how scary that must have been? Just like to be pressed on the ground and feeling a train passing roll over you. You're like, oh my God. Horrible. Number three, Autry jumped onto the tracks because he wanted to be a hero. Okay, so what about this one? What do you think? False. false. Jenny says false. Okay, yeah. All right. So you say false. He said, I don't feel like I did anything spectacular. I just saw someone who needed help. I did what I felt was right. So he didn't want it to be, he didn't want, I'm sorry. Bad grammar right there. He didn't he want to be. Humbled. He was humble. That's right. He was humble. He didn't want to be a hero. He just wanted to help someone. Okay. In need. That's a good thing. Okay. That's a good thing. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just finished. Okay. Uh, section number three. Remember, you need to work on the platform and uh, complete section number four and the exam. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know via the WhatsApp chat. Okay. So if, if there's an exercise that's giving you trouble, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try to do my best to to help you over the weekend. So um, I heard or I read that you were supposed to be finishing everything by the 18th, which will be Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. But they also say that they're going to send the final grades on the 20th. I'm not really sure how that works, okay, honestly. But just in case, try to work on it as soon as you can. All right. So, and again, if, if you need my help, I'll be there. And the next week, we're going to, you know, go through the whole section normally, okay? Classes, right? You know, remember that you have to uh, join the meetings anyway, because it's, it's part of, you know, it's one of the requisites to complete the level. All right. So, um, just before we go, let me check the attendance one more time, very quickly. Um, participants. Okay, Avdi Avisua, I believe she said on the WhatsApp group that she will not join the meeting. Alejandro is here, Ana Filomena Mendoza is here, Ana Yanira Mendoza is also here, yes. Andrea Michelle Garcia is here, Byron Rafael Avelar is also here, Boris Martin Salinas is here, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado is here, Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez is here, Claudia Yenet Iraeta Martinez is here, Debbie Segura Ramos, Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos is here, Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia is also here. Gabriela Laura Sequera Bernal is here. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez is here. Yes. Gladys Imelda Sanchez is here. Jenny Elizabeth Santiana Cortez is here. Jose Rabin Enriquez is also here. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. I don't think she could join us tonight. Uh, Luis Fernando Enriquez Herrera is, was here. 
is not here anymore. Madeline Diana Salón de Paz is here. Maritza Isabel Martinez is here. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva is here. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle is here. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura is here. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández Flores is here. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares is here. And Sandra Cecilia Munguia is also here. Everybody, thank you for your participation. And um, thank you for joining the meeting tonight. Okay, remember no class tomorrow. It's Friday. Please work on the platform. Okay, and I'll be seeing you on on Monday. And if you need help, okay, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, I'm going to do my best to help you. Take good care and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good weekend, everybody. Bye -bye.